What's crackalacking? It's your boy Baroshmo. Just in case you did not know, so and I'm back again, once again, with my top offensive tackle prospects for the 2021 NFL Draft class. This is a very deep offensive tackle class, as we'll get into it all. I'm about to give you my top 10 guys, and all of them have third round grades or higher. Uh, but if you want to check out my full list, go ahead and become a Bro Scout tier member. It's the best way to support the channel. You get access to the Discord. And on top of that, you get access to my full ranking. So I highly encourage you to do that. But before we get in, go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Go ahead and leave a comment. It helps the video out a ton. So let's let's do this sucker, man. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Pine Soul, we're starting at one. He's number one. It's kind of obvious. I, I don't get this whole putting Rashawn Slater ahead of Soul. I think it's kind of a recency not even, you can't even say it's a recency bias like because slater opted out of the 2020 season as did Sewell. so i think it's just man the, this whole time not seeing him play you forget how good he is and you feel the need to put someone else up there but the dude's just a special talent special combination of power and movement skills he just has a whole track record of dominance he if you want to nitpick, he played in a screen heavy offense and he didn't really face any top tier edge rushers outside of probably Kavon Thibodeau, who you would line up against in practice. So that's about it. But I mean, the dude's a top three pick. He's phenomenal. It, I think it's going to be hard pressed uh, for a team that doesn't need a quarterback to pass on him. And then I have moved Rashawn Slater to number two, but it's more like two. 2A and 2B. Really cool with him and number three, Darisaw. But let's go ahead and get into Slater, man. He opted out of 2020, as I already said. Very natural athlete and very technically sound. He's got a very good process and speed. It's just next level. And he never really gets beat out of his stance. He's always the first at the point of attack. His biggest, biggest concerns are going to be the size and the arm length. That's why you have a lot of people projecting that he could play probably move to guard he could probably even play center if he wants to but that's all projection he's never done that at the collegiate level i say just keep him at tackle he does have a real light anchor though he won't really move guys off the line and in pass protection sometimes he gets hit with a bull rush he will be walked back into the pocket so there are some concerns there but i think he's good enough to be a top 15 pick and then, as I mentioned, Christian Darisaw is my 2B, another top 15 pick. He looks NFL ready. He's already had two years of consistency with one more year this past year being just flat out elite. He outplayed many draftable edge talents this season. And like Chris Rumpf, uh, uh, Demi Kiji, uh, Boogie Basham, Roche, Jalen Phillips. He, he won all those contests handedly physically he's very imposing in the run game he really really good at laying out combo blocks uh powerful hands and an upper body he just moves men against their will he might be more adept to a zone blocking scheme as far as his grading where at virginia they really had a run heavy offense there and typically he actually graded out well or much better in the zone blocking schemes rather than gap blocking but uh, not seeing a ton of pass sets, but enough. Enough to, for you to feel confident about. Uh, if I were going to criticize his anything in terms of pass protection, sometimes he gives the outside. Um, he he leaves it open a little too quickly, opens, opens up his hips and tries to ride defenders. But, I mean, the, the dude's got, like I said, solid hands, man. Powerful hands. Sometimes he just knocks those guys dead in their tracks. And then I got Dylan Radins out of North Dakota State. Overall, athleticism and explosiveness is among the top in this class. Technique is great. And he came to the Senior Bowl, and he looked much bigger, getting above 300 pounds, which is what you like to see. And what I really wanted to see before I moved him up into the first round was oh, i just wanted to see him against quality competition because in 2019 he he was okay but he, i don't think he was anything special against fcs level competition but he came to the senior bowl and he looked he didn't just look like he belonged he dominated he had like an 83 percent win rate 
in the uh, one on one drills he looked much stronger in terms of play strength he's he had a solid anchor in the run game uh if you again if you want to go back to nitpicking he had he he did play in a very run heavy offense there at north dakota state but like i said at the senior bowl it looked all just fine it looked fine and then i got tevin jenkins out of oklahoma state my final first round graded offensive tackle here extremely strong just tosses men around the line of scrimmage could be because he's like a redshirt senior so he's kind of a man among boys but he's very good at getting to the second level but more often than not he finishes by lunging which is you don't really want to do because it takes yourself out of the play and it's not entirely guaranteed you take the defender out but he's definitely i would definitely say he's much more agile in the run game than the passing game and i think part of that is because i think he's a better straight line athlete than he is a lateral athlete but i mean his hands are just so strong he utilizes them super well it's like almost nearly impossible to get to his strike zone and often if he is beat off the line he could just knock defenders like out of the play just stop them in their tracks kill their momentum with those powerful hands he was for the most part very untested just coming from the big 12 you're often only seeing three-man fronts so again it'd be something to worry about but i like this guy's nad uh, nastiness and tenacity uh he just he's got a mentality you gotta love for offensive linemen and then Samuel Cosby is going to start my second round graded tackles here. Athleticism, easily his best quality. Extremely athletic, might be one of the most athletic tackles in this class. He's also very battle tested as a pass protector, seeing almost 500 true pass sets throughout his career. He's very good at sinking his uh, hips low in the run game and just kind of like just getting getting good leverage on, def on um, defenders. But he does play a bit high in the pass game, which is a bit worrisome. Kind of opens him up to bull rushes, which already Cosme, you think his play strength isn't, he doesn't necessarily have plus play strength. But when you're starting high and especially at 6'7", then you're already giving up leverage and you're just getting pushed back on your heels and you're playing off balance more times than not. And we, we kind of saw that with, strangely enough quicker pass rushers like if you go back to 2019 Glavon chase on when you're when you're able to be pushed back by Glavon chase on then it's like it's a bit concerning a bit worrisome but i just think a few things he needs to work out with his technique i i still believe he's a he could be a day one starter for some outside zone blocking scheme and then at seven, I got Walker Little, man. I know he hasn't played in like two years. He opted out of 2020, and he only played one game in 2019 against Northwestern before basically being knocked out of the rest of the season with the knee injury. But he received high praise from the offensive lineman, whisperer himself, Coach Paul Alexander. So part, a big part of me is taking his word on it here. But he did show significant development during the last stretch of 2018 and the beginning of 2019 in that Northwestern game. And I mentioned this last year when before he decided to come back for his senior year. Uh, very physically imposing being 6'7", um, like 310 pounds. He sets a very deep anchor, one of the better run blockers in this class. Great foot speed and ability to mirror really anybody for a guy that size too. It's very impress uh, impressive. Uh, but at 6'7", he does play a at least based on what last time we saw him he did play a little bit high which typically when you're when you're at that six seven or higher mark it's going to be tough not letting guys out leverage you and at times you know he he would open up the outside a bit prematurely the thing is just since we haven't seen him we have no clue where his development has gone like we we don't know how he's developed but i'm going to take coach alexander's word on it and i'm going to Leave him at a second round grade. And I'm going to have him as my number seven currently. And then Liam Etchenberg. I'm currently editing this and I just noticed. All right. It's Eichenberg. I messed up. We all know how I'm with names. I mispronounce stuff all the time. It's not on purpose. It just happens. But I know someone in the comment section is going to use this as a, oh, if you don't even know the real names, we can't even trust your opinions on these guys. Just shut up. Just shut up. 
Enjoy the video. Listen to the opinion. All right. <laughs> Let's have some good, sensual, intimate football discourse in the comment section. Ah. <sighs> Notre Dame, one of the most technically sound tackles in this class, probably can be a day one starter from the get go. He played many NFL blocking concepts at Notre Dame there, so he's kind of versatile. He could pl really play in any scheme. Uh, his play strength was extremely solid despite the size, and his uh, he established leverage pretty well. And I mean, part of that you kind of worry about because it doesn't look like his length is anything special, but won't really know until we get real measurements out there. But this is kind of the nail in his coffin is he's limited as an athlete. And a lot of people like to throw, okay, limited as an athlete, but very good technician. Mitchell Schwartz comp, which that's not always guaranteed. You're always, you're hoping like that you, you throw that comp out there, hoping he could be Mitchell Schwartz. So you're sitting here with like, okay, uh, limited athlete with with length concerns playing there on the edge. You don't typically take those guys in the second round. And, but with Enchenberg, you're kind of hoping he's the exception. And uh, I think you're, I, I feel better about taking this guy probably late second round. Just because, I mean, again, you're hoping he's going to be the exception, not the standard there. So he's more of a high floor, low ceiling type of guy. And then we have Alex Leatherwood, man. Saw quite the uh, fall this year. Uh, but I mean, his strength and length are just very appealing. He was a former five-star recruit. He consistently graded out pretty well for Alabama over three seasons as a starter. But we saw this in the Senior Bowl. Quicker pass rushers really exposed. Um, and I don't really want to say he has heavy feet. I think he just has lazy footwork. Um, he comes out of this wide base, which kind of makes it hard for you to get your feet under you and to move your feet quickly. But he, he was just exposed at the Senior Bowl. He lost handedly to Quincy Roche and William Bradley Keene on the first day. I will admit that he did look much better day two, day three, and in the Senior Bowl game. Uh, but that is that is a concern because we're working with a guy whose athleticism and explosiveness isn't top tier. Um, it's less than ideal for the tackle position. But I'm still willing to bet that this guy can be a tackle based on that length and that strength and his production in Alabama. So I'm still willing to try him out their a tackle before I move him into guard. Uh, and you really have no worries about him as a run blocker. He's going to be a phenomenal run blocker at the next level. And then number 10 on my list is James Hudson the third man. As my first third, well, third round graded prospect here. And he is kind of a very high end developmental prospect. Because just, he, he switched from playing defensive line to offensive line his freshman year there at Michigan, but he never received much playing time before he transferred to Cincinnati. Well, he only had, a, I think it was like 130 snaps there played at tackle. Really saw his first significant amount of playing time at tackle this season, but he was very, very good. He's got, he's got a huge athletic upside with tons and tons of power, extremely quick feet. He's very fluent, can move to the second level but he does at times have that has that lunging problem i kind of brought up earlier and um with some other prospects that um sometimes he takes them out of takes them out of the play you know and it's kind of a uh all or nothing man it's sometimes you'll be able to take a guy out of the play with him sometimes he won't but plays with the good nastiness just kind of still kind of it's like he has a defensive line mentality still which i like but technically, he's all over the place. Really needs reworked. Um, at the Senior Bowl, tech, like technique-wise, the only thing that probably looked good about him was his stance, you know. And he was really quick getting out of it. But after that, man, it's just it was just problems. Really didn't know how to use his hands. Uh, he didn't really slide into ideal positions. But with pure upside, this guy won the he won the most. He had the highest win rate among offensive linemen, 88%. So 
So he was winning. With, it didn't look beautiful. It didn't didn't look good all the time. Some of them were some ugly wins, but he's a winner. So I love this upside. It's a very high end upside. You're betting on that upside, but he might need a year or two to really develop because he just doesn't have a lot of experience at tackle yet. But uh, that's it for the video. Unless, of course, you are my uh, Bro Scout tier members, then we'll keep on going after this. I have uh, ooh, 17 more tackles to go through. So, yeah, that ought to be fun. So, yeah, I highly suggest you go ahead and become a Bro Scout tier member. Uh, but go ahead, do the YouTube thing. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. Bye.